diving into the world of peptides for performance or longevity, you've probably realized there are a lot of peptides and choosing the right one for your goals can get confusing pretty fast. As a scientist with an integrative edge, I've done the research to help simplify this for you. And today we're gonna to talk about three of the most worthwhile peptides that are being studied for strength, energy, and fat loss, and how they may support your overall health and body composition goals. Now, before we dive in, everything I'm about to say is for educational purposes only. These compounds are still considered research use only, and in most cases, I am not encouraging self-use, but I get asked about peptides every day, and my goal is to help you understand what they are and what the data says and how to think critically about them. I'm a PhD doctor on YouTube. I'm not your medical doctor. So with that, let's get into it. We'll start with one of the most popular growth hormone supporting stacks, CJC1295 and ipamorelin. These two peptides work synergistically to increase growth hormone pulses and downstream IGF-1. These are the hormones that support strength, muscle, repair, recovery, and that deep sleep quality. So you feel like you slept really good and your brain is gonna function better. You're gonna be better able to lift in your workouts and get better results just in life in general. So for people who train regularly, especially those lifting weights, this stack can promote measurable gains in strength and lean mass. But I always say this, you have to do the work. Peptides don't build muscle for you. They just enhance the results of your training. And this combo can improve that deep sleep. It can also improve skin elasticity by helping with collagen production. And it's amazing. So this combo isn't for everyone. It should not be used by anyone with an active cancer since growth hormone pathways could feed that tumor growth. People sometimes report a brief flushing sensation of the face and scalp right after injection. That's typically the CJC1295. If that bothers you, you can skip it and just do ipamorelin alone. And if you ever experiment in a research setting, always start with a very small test dose to see how your body responds. Next up is gonna be tessamorelin. Sometimes this is called the visceral fat incinerator. Tessamorelin is actually FDA approved, but for one specific use, HIV associated lipodystrophy. This means it's pre prescribed to reduce visceral fat, that deep fat surrounding your organs in certain patients that are on HIV medications. In clinical trials, it reduced visceral fat adiposity by about 15 to 20% after six to 12 months of consistent use. And that's a big deal because visceral fat is the type that's most strongly linked to metabolic disease, cardiovascular risk, and insulin resistance. So naturally, a lot of researchers are asking that if this peptide can reduce that dangerous fat, might it have broader metabolic and longevity applications? Personally, I think tesmorelin might be one of the most promising peptides for reducing visceral fat, and we have real human data on it, so that's pretty cool. That said, there are a couple of downsides. It can be expensive, does require daily injections, and it can cause mild joint or water retention. However, that water retention will go away once you stop the peptide, so maybe it's something that you use in the winter. And you need to monitor blood sugar and IGF-1 levels while using it. IGF-1, super high, phys super physiological IGF-1 levels have been linked to some risk risk of certain cancers. So we want to be mindful of that and it can elevate blood sugar in certain people. So just two things that you can do simple blood tests and kind of keep an eye on. Also keep in mind, it doesn't necessarily reduce subcutaneous fat. That's the fat under the skin that people want to lose for cosmetic reasons, but it is reducing the harmful type of fat, visceral fat. Next, let's talk about MOTC. This is one of my favorites. It's an underrated research peptide, and it's fascinating because it's actually produced inside your own mitochondria. That's the energy powerhouse of your cell, remember? So MOTC acts like a messenger that tells your body how to respond to metabolic stress, like fasting or exercise. In fact, it's actually called um, exercise mimetic because it activates the same pathways that are activated by exercise. And by the way, MOTC is also produced by our bodies after we exercise. So it activates the AMPK pathway, which is your bo body's master energy switch. And this teaches your body how to use energy more efficiently. In other words, it helps your mitochondria recharge and perform better. 
In early research and a lot of anecdotal reports, some people notice more energy, stamina, improved endurance, and body recomposition benefits. But again, this peptide is still in early research. The mouse studies show that it can reverse diet-induced obesity, and it can make the, the mice perform better on exercise tests, even older mice. So it's really exciting peptide and something that I think we should watch closely as I think it has a lot of potential benefits for aging biology. And then there's 5-amino-1-MQ. This is another fascinating, it's not a peptide, but we often discuss it in the same space. So it's a small molecule that works by inhibiting an enzyme called NNMT or nicotinamide N-methyltransferase. When NNMT is blocked, your cells can preserve more NAD+. That's the molecule that fuels mitochondrial energy production. So higher NAD levels translate to better cellular energy efficiency and potentially a faster metabolic rate. Now in animal studies, it was shown to reduce fat cell size. It also improved insulin sensitivity and increased lean body mass and enhanced energy metabolism. So people in research settings often describe it as helping their body to feel cleaner burning, like more energy, less fatigue, better body composition. And it can often be paired with MOTC to work synergistically together. But this compound is still preclinical, so we don't have a lot of large-scale human data. Mechanistically, it's pretty exciting because it ties together two major longevity pathways, the NAD plus system and the metabolic regulation. So I see 5-amino-1-MQ as a potential future bridge between energy optimization and fat loss science. But again, it remains research use only for now. So there you have it, four fascinating compounds currently being studied for metabolic and performance enhancement. CJC1295 plus ipamorelin for muscle and recovery, tessamorelin for visceral fat and longevity benefits, MOTC for mitochondrial energy and efficiency, 5-amino-1-MQ for metabolic efficiency and preserving our NAD plus levels. If you found this helpful, you can download my free peptide guide. It breaks down the most talked about peptides, also goes into stacks and lifestyle strategies for better energy recovery and longevity. That's going to be linked below. And if you're a woman looking to learn more about how to use these tools safely and effectively, you can join my private group, Women's Optimized Wellness. This is where we deep dive into topics like this every week. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.